Mr. Goody. And part of the reason why they call me that is I work on just about everything. Well, today what I'm going to be working on is a HP 15 dash, and I believe it's F272WM. And what's happened was the motherboard had went out of the old one. And no problem, I like getting elbow deep in computers and electronics or anything that I work on for that matter, so it doesn't bother me. But it was more cost effective to get a computer from eBay that's like the screen that's been smashed. It cost it, it was cheaper to buy that, like a bare bone system, than to buy a home just to buy a motherboard. So what I've done and I'm opening this for the first time. I bought a bare bones laptop, the exact model, and uh, off of eBay. Like it was $66 to get this. And the motherboard would have been $79. So go figure. So since I have the knowledge to work on electronics in the laptop, I chose just to get the bare bones laptop. Much easier, more cost effective, and plus I'll have extra parts left. Now, if in fact the only thing that is wrong with this is that the, uh, uh, is that the screen is busted, then it's just gonna be a screen swap, which, it, which is pretty easy. So far, the bottom is not bad. Um, it is an 15-F272WM. If you want to look that up and see what kind of laptop I was working on. Oh, yeah, we got some scuffs on the top of this. They call this, I think they call this like Fire Wagon Red or Fire Flyer Red. So let's see what the, oh, it's, it's, it's clean. See what we have here. We have power. Okay. Looks like the crystals are busted. Hold on for one second. Okay. I am back now. What? And what I'm going to do, I've t sort of tested this laptop and the see, sound icon see seems to be working if you need an assistive screen reader press the windows that's cortana by the way at the same time to enable narrator and cortana is named after okay. enough intro Let's uh, uh, master chief's halo yeah. artificial intelligence crush yeah, I have a question. your region is set to the united states is that right now what I'm going to do is shut this down and then I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of taking this apart. Got my trusty screwdriver set with multiple bits. So what I'm doing now is taking the screws out of the laptop. And what I'm gonna to try to do on a lot of laptops, I know I've never talked about it before. I have worked on computers for literally, I mean, probably 20 years. And then I got A plus certified, which is easy to do by the way but I mean it makes people once you have the certificate it, it makes people look at you more seriously <clears throat> so some of these if you see the icon of a keyboard 
those are the screws that you take out. And then you can go underneath the keyboard and you don't have to take the whole uh, chassis, which means chassis means the case of the laptop out. And then you can just take those out without taking the whole computer apart. And you don't want to lose your screws. So I'm putting my screws up there. And what we're going to do, we're going to use this person's old screen. Now their old screen isn't perfect. It has a blemish in it, but it works good enough for them to use. All right, we'll see if I have enough screws out to pop off the keyboard. A lot of times there are little, um, like little tiny latches by the keyboard that will allow for the keyboard to come up. Sometimes there's a bezel at the top that will pop off. There's always a certain way for these to come off. Oh, and you know, it's different to each different laptop, but the purpose is still the same. Let me see if I just move the camera out of focus or out of where I was trying to record. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if there is a. I don't see any write off visible. any visible uh, way for the uh, keyboard to come up. So, with this model, looks like I'm going to have to uh, do it the long way, which that doesn't bother me. Looks like I'm going to have to uh, go ahead and take apart the whole chassis. And on that note, let me pause for a second because I think people are getting back from school. Okay, I am disassembling all the screws and everything. There's a screw that holds the optical drive. Optical drive just means any drive that holds a, a, a CD-ROM or a DVD burner. And I'm gonna start taking the chassis apart once I see that I have all the screws out. In this case, over here, once you take out the optical drive, there are three screws right here that are different from all the others. Very tiny little screws. So I'm gonna set them separate from the other screws. So there's the third one, and this is what you call a spudger. Um, it, it's not a good idea to like use a metal screwdriver when you're prying against like motherboards because they're they're also called PCBs, printed circuit boards. What happens when you use metal to pry against um, the boards? You can uh, like put dents, cracks. <laughs> Uh, scrapes you can really damage anything that's plastic or not metal so that's why I suggest using a spudger because it's plastic and it can separate 
a lot easier. What I'm doing, I don't know if you can see me or not, but there's um, these release um, clips that releases the chassis from the bottom of the computer, and that's what I'm releasing right now so that I can get this apart. And then I'm going to take, you see, a spacer. I use spacers a lot when I'm working on cell phones. They kind of look like little guitar picks. So, what I do with it is. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but I've got this pulled up ever so slightly, and I'm going to insert the spacer, which is plastic, underneath. And what that does, that keeps the chassis from closing again, but it gives me both hands to work with that I can take the spudger all the way across opening the case even more And again, this is kind of like, uh, you don't want to do this too hard. You just kind of want to do it delicately and make sure you have all the screws out of the case when you're doing this. If not, then you'll definitely damage your laptop. Okay, all that is up. Now, looks like we have to take out the wireless Wi Fi card. We'll put that there. I'm looking for any other little tiny screws. don't see any right off. Is that focused on me? Oh uh, yeah. You want to, because like the whole PC is not in like the top of the screen is it? Is this it in there now? Here, let me see. Yeah, that's good. That's right where I wanted it. Okay.
Okay. So, I'm not going to act like everything's going smooth because it's not. So what I'm going to do, I have taken apart this model of computer before. Here's the screen. And I'm going to see how the old one came off. Kind of going to use it as a reference. Did you put my bedding in the fryer? So, looks like the keyboard comes off. Now, this is going to be a cool um, thing. Um, because if you look at this, the top of the computer looks worn out, but the top of this one looks great. But the top of the screen on this one, the back of the bezel, is kind of scuffed up. And on this one, it's not on their old screen. So it's going to work out for the better in both ways. Looks like this keyboard comes out. First, let me get this keyboard, and I am going to see how it comes out. I'm trying to retrace here these steps. Okay, I think see how it comes out. In this case, I'm going to be very careful and use the razor blade. It looks like it just pops out with these little tabs. And then once you get a hold of it, it comes right out. And underneath of here, there is a connector. There, you kind of um, raise the this lever in here, just ever so slightly. And then that comes out. Keyboard is out! Yay! Let me set that over to the side. And then there's going to be some screws in the top here. You know how I've been taking the chassis apart? Well, I need to take a few screws from where underneath the keyboard was. And I'm going to put these screws separate because they are different lengths than the ones that go to the bottom of the chassis. So I'm going to put these here. Computer looks good on the inside, by the way. Usually you'll see Cheetos or some kind of dust, fluffy bunnies, you know, something in here. But <laughs> this looks like it's like almost off a store shelf or something. It looks pretty clean. Okay, we can have one more little spot to detach the touchpad cable and one more here's the little pick that I'd put in so that the chassis wouldn't close back we have one more connector to the um, to the uh, that was to the power button up here and then this comes off and I'm getting ready to start this. Someone needs me, so I'm gonna take a break for a second. Okay, I am back. I didn't want you guys to miss anything. I'm now down to where I disconnect. A lot of monitors will have a main connector. Some have a separate power connector or whatnot. Uh, some just have one connector that gives the LCD in the back lot power. And 
so forth and so on. This one, and it connects to the motherboard. And this motherboard also has integrated graphics, meaning that it doesn't have a separate video card. So it's not a really good gaming computer, which most of them aren't. Okay, inside of a monitor, usually um, these days you will have the antenna to the Wi-Fi. I have already disconnected the Wi-Fi from underneath on that card that I took out, the little Wi-Fi card. See that right there? And then right here, I'm disconnecting the monitor from the motherboard from the display. So now I have to unhook the hinges. Looks like there's one screw here for the hinge. And again, every computer is a little different. I see the speakers. This thing lo looks pretty good on the inside here. Okay. This has two, two screws. And let's see. Okay, well, this uh, this all this has three screws. I stand corrected, and this one over here has two. So What this has is a, a shield over the ethernet casing. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. I have a pair of tweezers up here. And that will help me take that. See, I'm taking that off. We're almost, almost free. And as you can see, this is now separated from the computer. So, what we're gonna do, remember that other screen I showed you guys just a few minutes ago? I am gonna put that in. Oh, I almost forgot. And I don't want to forget this. While I'm in here, I have to hook up the old hard drive. Since it is an identical computer. Okay, since these computers are exactly the same model uh, and everything even the same revision of the BIOS I can just swap out these hard drives and it will have the same drivers and everything and it will they will not lose any of their information which I'm sure they will be happy about but anyways what I'm doing off camera uh, I'm taking out the hard drive from the old computer and I'm going to put it in the new computer. So just give me a second to take that out. Then I'll be right back with you. blown any dust any, any kind of particulates off of here I 
And now you're going to see me do it over here for this. I'm going to need to take this off just to get it out of the way so I don't so I don't uh, cut the ribbon or anything like that. Now, I'm going to the interface connector. Basically, it's just a plug-in that plugs into the hard drive so the motherboard can read the hard drive. It's a SATA connection. Not every caddy or every way a hard drive comes out is different. This one is pretty well integrated. You users out there will know what I, what I mean. You people that work on computers, I mean, this has to come all the way off to get to instead of easy access. I kind of like when these have easy access and that you can get to them. But it doesn't really bother me because honestly, I like working on computers. It's in my blood. So, I could do this all day. Okay, now, what I have to do to get down in here, which makes it a lot easier, is to take these ports out. Okay, those ports are out now. So, since those ports are out, this hard drive is out. This is the hard drive that was in it, and then this is the hard drive that was in the original. Two different brand names with the same size. These are 500 gigabytes. Technically, <laughs> that's them, uh, this is the with the connector side, that's how they look. Okay, so what we do, we put this in here. See, this kind of has, forgot, I, I wanted to show you, this kind of has like, not even the caddy, it's kind of real thin plastic here, and it has this rubber on the sides with the regular size um, hard drive screws to screw that in. Anyways, it's gonna set down just like so, and it has the plastic inside the laptop. And you make sure it's snug in there. That's the word of the day, snug. And then you put the ports back on. And you put the screw back on the ports. And again, you don't have to over tighten the screws. Then here's the interface connector which is very important to plug in because that's what um, reads the hard drive. And then we want to connect the interface connectors back or these, these connectors over here won't work without it. Hold on one second. Make sure it's seated right over here. Okay. One second. Getting this these little ports seated right here. Hopefully you can see them. There's a little plastic clip. You wanna make sure it's lined up with them. And 
that's what I'm doing. I'm lining it up. And I'm tightening it down. Okay, now that that's done, you put this uh, I.O. cable into the motherboard. And then there's this retention clip. Make sure that is locked. Just like that. So, we're good to go there. And now, we take the old screen. And what we're going to do, we're going to put it in. to install it. Again, I have to go underneath this here. I have to go underneath the power jack here. Sorry, this is kind of awkward to get in there, but once it's in there, it's in there. Okay, let's see how we're looking because I don't want you guys to miss out on everything. That's nah, not looking too bad. You guys can still see me. Now we want to feed, or no, what we want to do now is we want to put the, uh, we want to mount these cables. <clears throat> we we want to mount the uh, the hinges so that this does not want to come up anymore. This is the shroud that went over the uh, the wired Ethernet port. Gonna screw that back in there. This is really easy to know where the screws go because they have triangles and, and like little pointers to where the screws go. This side also had three screws, if you remember. There was a screw up here. that big flat screw <clears throat> and that went right here all good and tight then you want to make sure that the cable that goes to the uh, Wi-Fi goes all the way around tuck nice and neat down through here that it goes underneath because this is going to be the antenna is built built in the, the antenna is built in the um, <clears throat> monitor the LCD display and you want it hooked upright or you will not get a good signal so what I'm doing is I'm fishing this back through underneath the motherboard and it's going to hook up to where 
the Ethernet card goes <clears throat> underneath the computer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use pliers to, gra to grab it the rest of the way now. See? It's coming out of the bottom of the case. Then I'm going to hook that to the Wi-Fi card in just a, a minute. I want to make sure that the wiring is right, out of the way, follows the right path as it should. That all looks good. This looks good. Everything's looking good. So, let's see what I'm going to do here is. goes here it's kind of a tight fit the power button um, cable goes here you kind of want to take it from above it has like a little plastic opening where you can get down through here to hook up the, the power button. And it's gonna slide. ever so gently into Okay, sometimes it takes a little bit of time just to get this in here. But once it's in there, it's in there. It's in there. Now, I am going to hook up the touchpad. I'm going to use the tweezers here pull up the uh, the locking mechanism, the retention bracket here. I'm going to slide it in to the connector and then I'm going to pull that plastic tab, the retention bracket tab, back down to lock it into place. Now once that is in place, I can then put the screws back on this. I can start snapping the chassis back into place. Can you hear that pop? Okay. Now. Put these screws back into underneath the keyboard of where the keyboard goes.
I've almost got this back together. I mean, not all the way back together, but I'm well on my way. Now what I need to do from here, you see there's a, the ribbon for the keyboard connector. I'm gonna have to connect that. I make sure that the retention bracket holds it into place is up. And then I close it back down. Okay, it's closed. Then I put it in the grooves. There's these plastic little um, extensions that goes into the grooves. They line up. You line that up, you push it back down until you hear that pop sound all the way around. Nice and flush, nice and flush. Well, what I should do before I go any farther, since it is mostly back together, I don't want to get it all the way back together and it not come on. So I'm going to test it out, okay? And then if everything checks out okay, I'm going to clean this down and put the rest of the screws back in. Let me turn this off so maybe you can see better. You can see the screen's not busted. It does have blemishes over here, but that's the best. I could fix it before it was a lot worse than that and they're gonna be happy with it, that the way it is they're gonna contend with it I wasn't paid to replace the screen if you recall I still have to put in the optical drive back in and the Wi-Fi and then you know I'm gonna clean it up Taking a little while to boot up. Again, uh, this is normal when you replace uh, a whole motherboard and everything because this is the first time this hard drive has been hooked up to this motherboard. So it may take a few minutes for Windows to discover everything, the port settings, you know, the BIO settings may have been a little different for it to configure the software. So oh, that's that's what it's doing now. It's getting everything ready. Batteries on ten percent. And then you can see now that this was their hard drive. Um, I'm not going to know a password if there is one. Please. See, as you can see, um, hey, there's a password. You know, pull it up because they can't really see. Don't know it. So, let's see here.
Was that what you were trying to fix the keyboard? No. Okay. I'll update you. I'm going to get the laptop. Well, you guys wanted to see that, so I'm going to put the laptop back together. Oh, it wasn't together. There it is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are three-fourths of the way home. I'm now testing uh, the keyboard. The keyboard works fine. I want to go ahead and shut this down. Looks like everything's doing good. is good for me. I'm going to go ahead and start putting this back together. Remember this little card? This is this is the Wi-Fi card. I'm putting it back into the uh, laptop. It connects to the number one pin. Then it slides right into the connector slot. Here I am talking like a car stereo instructions. If you've been doing this for years, it's, it's like second nature, it really is. screws and everything from over here. to make sure that the mini Wi-Fi card is secure. And what I'm doing now is trying to find the right screw. I've got all my screws labeled except for that one. But I'll know it when I see it. Because it is the only short one. go we are cooking with fire okay and then we put the uh, optical drive back in and that's going to line back up when I use these screws wait 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 almost forgot something before you put the optical drive back in <clears throat> remember these three small screws well, these secure the chassis the rest of the way. So there's going to be three of those. Short, little, flat screws. See, they're very small, very small. Small thread, big head. Okay. Then, once those are in, the optical drive should just slide right in, flush. Uh, 
I have to use their battery because this didn't come with the battery. Uh, let's see. I'm going to clean that up a little bit before I put that back in. Anyways. I'm going to make sure that keyboard is first I'm going to put the, the slide back on the cover for the Wi-Fi card and uh, the memory card Okay, the remainder of the screws are going to go in the bottom of the laptop. And again, you don't want to over tighten these. You just tighten them um, to where they're just a little bit tight. Because, I mean, there's, there's no use to over tighten them. You, you'll break the standoffs. Almost sounds like a uh, an air tool putting these on so fast. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use one with bigger bit, bigger Phillips bit. That way I can get them on even faster. Have a little more torque. See, did I already put any down in there? No. Won't need this razor blade anymore. Put that back in there. I never did need the suction cup. That's for the phones mostly that I work on. That's already in there. Yes, I've already got that in there. Need one right here. Okay, let me see the bottom here. Now I'm not going to use all of the screws because some are from the other laptop as well, so.
Okay, it looks like the bottom looks like it has all the screws. Nice and tight. Visually inspecting it. All right, I'm gonna put on pause for a minute because I'm gonna do the boring stuff like clean it. I'm gonna use alcohol wipes. And then I'll turn this back on and you can see. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm really cleaning this thing up, cleaning it off, giving it its a cleaning touch. I don't like when computers are dirty. Of course, that scuff is going to be there. I'm going to see if I have something. Hold on one second. See, in my early days, I learned just about any kind of scrape or sticker or anything can come off if you have the right compound. I know we don't have any mean green or anything. So I, I know that um, Goo Gone used to be able to take scuffs out and markers and things. So if you ever have markers or crayon, definitely crayon on your wall, you can try some Goo Gone and see if that'll take it off. But there's a pretty good chance it'll take it off this uh, bottom of the laptop. And that that's what, or we'll make it at least less visible and that's what I'm going to try to do here. Put some elbow grease. And this bad dude, this bad whammer jammer. started to take off a little bit of the sticker here a little bit of the info on the sticker but not the important part just barely but as you can see it's stuck off the whole scuff up that way and it's going to take it off this way too if I just keep putting elbow grease into it and I am I'm going to, I just don't stop until it looks good. I try to fix every machine as if I would be happy. And I pay attention to detail. See how all that's disappearing now, them scuffs? Look at that. big scuffs now I'm finding some little scuffs I'm gonna get that to come off as well while I was inside of this laptop I made sure that the uh, ventilation system the cooling fans the thermal grease everything was the thermal grease was not dried up there was there wasn't an abundance of it because too much can cause overheating you just need enough to conduct the CPU to the to the metal so that the hot air can be blowed out of the ventilation ducts. And you want that to be cleared from you know, debris. There now look at that. Would you look at that? Nice. See? Now, where's the scuffs? How about that? How about you? 
Now up here there's some nicks and dings that are just not going to be able to come out, but overall it looks good. Let me plug this bad dude in. And then the only thing I have left to clean is the screen here. It's kind of kind of dirty a little. Then I'm going to get the lint and everything off of it. Going over it. Getting down beside the cracks. Inside the cracks. Up here, clean the webcam off. I mean, so far, I mean, I don't know if you can see the crest test, but you can see that's pretty brown. Shoot. Okay, at the end of the day, this is after everything's clean, back together, finishing touches. Don't need the light on anymore. Uh, battery. It's stating that the battery is kind of old, may need to be replaced, which is normal in older batteries. It may hold a little bit of a charge. It may not. Cutting my tools back in. My toolbox here. I'm getting the old laptop parts. As you can see, uh, the new one is in much better shape than what the old one was. So I'm putting those old parts over here, cleaning off my desk. Now this is the thing I did not fix right here. I was told not to fix that, or I would have. You can see that everything works good. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. And that, everyone, is how you take apart an HP 15. F 272 WM you take it completely apart pretty much and then you replace the screen and you swap out the hard drives and also make sure that it's clean inside and that everything's working properly I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time